Good morning, everyone. Um, today is the August the 12th. It's 9 o'clock in the morning. Um, um, well, I'll just wait a few minutes here and hopefully like I said, some, wait for some individuals to come online. Uh, I'm sure I've been enjoying the weather, praise God. As the scripture says, you know, the Lord God sends his rain to confirm his inheritance when it's weary. You know, we need to be refreshed, hallelujah. Because <laughs> we get weary, you know. All right, well, it's, um, it's a little after 9, 9 and 1, so uh, I'm going to get started here. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, Father. I acknowledge your presence right now, Father. I thank you, Lord God, that in Jesus' name, you go with me, amen. You carry us up, O oh God. Glory to God. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for this word, amen. Your word is life unto those who find them and help to all their flesh, Father. The entrance of your word gives light and gives understanding to the simple, Lord God. I thank you, Lord Jesus, right now for your word. Amen. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Amen. The word of God is you, Lord Jesus. Amen. And we beheld the word of God. And we beheld the word of God, and the word was made flesh. Amen. Hallelujah, Father God. I thank you, Lord God, for, for our hearts that are full of your word, Father. Father, the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Amen. I thank you, Lord God, right now that you flow, that you flow like a river out of my spirit, man, glory to God. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, for the many, many people that will hear these messages, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name, that you quicken them, Father, according to your word, for your word is truth, Father. And as we beheld, as we behold, Father, this word of life, Father, I thank you, Lord God, how you quicken us, O oh God, and how you make it alive to us, O oh God. For we know, Father God, that that we cannot hear these words in the carnal man. We cannot be a carnal man and hear the word of the Lord. Amen. For it's going to be as Jesus said, having ears to hear and not hear and having eyes to see and not see. Him. Oh, Father, in Jesus' name, Father, I thank you, Lord, Father, for this day. And I thank you for your goodness and mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I've been really excited about uh, this word, this, this particular word, because once again it teaches us about the ways of God. And you know, the scripture talks about the children of Israel and that they knew his acts, okay, but Moses knew his ways. And you know the ways of God by spending time with your father, amen, because that impartation that comes from the Lord, from his presence, that's, that's what begins helps you to understand and start seeing the Word of God, the Kingdom of God, amen, and the way God operates. And this is what is vital in, in our operation with the Lord. So, I just want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, to, to spend time with God. Spend time with His Word. Read the Word. Study the Word, amen. Study to show yourself approved. The workmen that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. You know, we're going to get into our into our foundational scriptures here, but you know the thing about the Word of God is that is that it, you know the, the revelation of the Word will always come, revelation, transfiguration, manifestation, or the blade, the ear, the full corn, or thirty, sixty, and a hundredfold, etc. So, in other words, you're going to see it. You're going to comprehend, you're going to understand. As you start giving yourself to the Word, giving yourself to meditation and prayer over the Word, in your time and in your fellowship with God and the Father, then it begins to transfigure your mind, as the Scripture says in Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world, 
but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove again what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. The blade, the ear, the four corner, 30, 60, 100, Revelation, Transfiguration, Manifestation. And that you might be able to, if, when, when, when you're, again, that word transforms, changes your mind because it fills your heart. Your spirit, man, speaks those words of life and, and brings them forth and reveals to you the things of God, the things that Jesus has spoken to you, the ways of God, etc. And, um, and therefore, you know, you're, 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 you're not being conformed to the world, but you are being conformed to the Word of God, amen, the ways of God. And, and we don't want to be inspired by the world. We don't want to be influenced by the world. You know, it's so interesting. I remember one time me and my wife, we went to this meeting. It was supposed to be uh, a couple's, you know, marriage seminar. <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> it was interesting because... <clears throat> You know, back then, you know, I wasn't real clear on a lot of what God has, you know, called me into as the Son of God and the work that He's given to me. <clears throat> and, um, you know, the theme, they were playing this music, this rocky music, you know, dun, 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 you know, and, and, and you know, it was just it was just so grievous, you know, because it was the mixture of the world mixing it in with, with Christianity, if you will, which is not Christianity, but it's Babylon, in other words, it's confusion. And that's and that's the problem. You see, we we speak one thing when we're in the church and we partake of God and we partake of the world and its and its perversions, and then we 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 speak the word to the world of those that are not born again, those that do not know God, and then they, when they do finally come in, and then they start seeing, you know, all the mixture, it, it brings a lot of confusion. But, you know, the scripture says that God is not the author of confusion, right? So, who is the author of confusion? Well, his name is Satan, amen, and that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to confuse us and understanding the purpose and understanding the will and understanding the work and the way of God. And, and therefore, because of that confusion, which is what Babylon is, you know, Nimrod, the days of Nimrod, they built the tower, and it was called Babylon, you know, and um, Babel, the tower of Babel, Babel means confusion, he confused their languages, he, he no longer, um, obviously he wasn't going to accept what they were trying to do, because they were trying to ascend down to up, you see, you can't do that, it's got to come from God. It's got to descend. The wisdom of God descendeth. Amen. <clears throat> and it's peaceable. Uh, and so, anyway, the, the point that I'm making is the wisdom that the world is operating in, the spirit of this world, the children of disobedience, the children of lawlessness, etc., etc. This wisdom descendeth from below. In other words, it comes from the demonic realm. You know, we quote these great scriptures. I mean, excuse me. I saw this quote on my Facebook post this morning, and, and it was uh, something Mark Twain and kindness, and boy, it just grieved my spirit, man, because the body of Christ, to make up for their lack of their relationship with the Lord, they, they, they look for inspiration in other areas, and, you know, our breath of life, the breath of life, which is in your spirit, man, that's where the inspiration needs to be needs to come from, you know. There's a scripture in Job that says I think it says thy visitation is preserved on spirit. No, the inspiration of writing is in life and his understanding. Well, I have to go search for it, but the point is is that the inspiration needs to come from your spirit, man, not from this world, not from the God of this world. See, we have to understand the prince of this world is already judged. Everything that he's inspired, everything that he's brought forth, which is complete opposite of God, mind you. You know, he had it in mind to ascend to the throne. He wanted to be like God. He thought the glory was coming from him. We're talking about Lucifer before he was cast down. And, and, he, and we, he thought the glory was coming from himself, and he didn't realize he was a reflection. And that's what we are. We reflect the glory of God. Amen. And um, anyway, 
It, we, we, again, we must understand who the source is of the inspiration. We cannot mix and blend with the world. The scripture says that he that is a friend of the world is an enemy of God. You know, we're going to have to come to that place where we believe God's word. And I don't want to be hostile towards my father and his ways. I, mean, I want to flow with the spirit. I want to move with God. I want to move in his, in his presence and his word. I want to move with the ways of God. I, I don't want to be foolish. And I don't want to be all mixed up and blended with the world. I want the Holy Ghost. I want, I want the power of God to be manifested in, in my life. Not for my glory. But to glorify Jesus Christ, amen. Why did the Holy Ghost, one of the reasons he got sent, amen, why? Jesus said that he's going to testify of me. He's not going to testify of Joseph. He's not going to testify of, testify of your ministry. You think he's testifying of you. He's te testifying of Jesus Christ, amen. This is why he's in the earth, amen. To witness to us and to bring us into an understanding of what Jesus has already spoken with you, what he's given us. So... Be encouraged, you know, that, that thank God there's repentance, you know. Sorry, the mic is a little hot. I, I thought, well, I don't want to get up and go turn it down, but I just pull back from the mic. So, be encouraged, you know, there is repentance, glory to God. Not the God, not the worldly kind of repentance, which is you repent because you got caught, which is metamaloma is the Greek word there. It's the repentance of, that, that, that brings godly sorrow. In other words, compunction, true heartfelt repentance always turns you back to the Father. Amen. And, and when, it's, when it's repentance of the world and the way they operate, they repent or they change or they say they're sorry because they got caught. They regret, in other words, that they were caught and now they got to repent and now they got to say sorry. Well, the issue with that is that is that the whatever whatever that thing they were pulling away from or whatever they got caught with well they'll be back in it you know oh man hallelujah let's read the scriptures here hebrews chapter 5 verse 12. i was i was looking at this word the script the verse right before 5 12 which is obviously 11. And uh, I'm going to start with that one. It says, Upon we have many things to say and hard to be uttered. They're hard to come forth. See, there's a lot of truth and a lot of things that God wants to impart and bring forth to the body of Christ and bring the body of Christ into but because of their carnality and their lack of maturity in the things of God. He can't trust us. He can't trust you because you're not a disciple. You don't want to follow hard after Jesus Christ. You don't want to do all the word. You want to do some of the word. You know, and it's always let me first. I need to do this first. I need to do this first. When we don't understand the way of God is that if, if something is of God, you can lay it down and he'll bring it back to you. You don't have to be in fear, you know, knowing, not knowing what the will of God is. So we have many things to say, Logos. Me, of one we have many things to Logos, to say, and hard to be uttered. They're hard to be uttered because, and explained because, and of course the word uttered is lingo, which means to lay forward the course. I can't lay the course for, I can't lay it forth for you in order because you're dull. Dull of hearing, slow, sluggish, indolent, dull in language. You're sluggish. You're lazy about the Word of God. You don't want to get involved in the Word of God because the Word of God is going to convict you. The Holy Ghost is going to convict you. It says, and that word comes from the word 3541 in the Greek, which is nothos, which is illegitimate bastard. And we know that, 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 a, that, a, that a bastard will not receive the Word of God. So we've got to come to the place where we grow up in the Lord. Again, the scripture teaches us that what's on the sea when the Father doesn't correct in Hebrews 12 there. Are you bastards and not we us? The we us of God, they receive correction, they know and understand the way of the Father, and this is the way of the Father for us to be corrected by the Word. Amen. And it comes through brothers and sisters. Amen. It comes through the governments and the, and the fellowship. It comes through the helps in the fellowship. Anybody, amen, that, that, that God is using to bring that word forth to you, to bring you back into correction, to reconcile you back to your Father. That's the goal, amen. Reconciling everything back to the Father. <clears throat> so, 
dull of hearing. You know, you're not hearing. You don't want to hear the Word of God. You don't want to be involved in the Word of God. You'd rather be involved in whatever you, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things, enter in and choke the Word and it becomes unfruitful. And, uh, and we don't want to be at that place, amen. We want to be at a place where we're easy to be treated. That is, if you got a word for me, if you need to correct me, or if I need to correct you, it, you receive it with meekness, the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. This word is going to come in. It's going to minister to you and bring you to a place where you're reconciled back to your Father in all facets of our lives, in our soul, in our mind, our will, and our emotions. Verse 12. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, you should be at a place, you know, you're, you've been involved in the Word of God for years and years and years. You should be at a place where you can rightly divide this Word of Truth and bring forth this living water any given time, glory to God. You have need that one teach you again. In other words, i got to go back to the beginning again for you with you because you soiled yourself. You're back into the carnal man. You know, denying yourself, taking up your cross is a daily thing. It's not I believe it and then therefore it's applicable to me. It's a process. It's a way of life. It's not something that we flippantly quote, you know, and confess, which is which is a mental sin. You know, it's coming from you and your in your in your mind, trying to confess these good things when you don't understand this that you don't you don't believe the word. You don't you're not acting on the word. You're acting on yourself. And and we should be at a place where we teachers. We got we ought to be taught again which be the first principles of the oracles of God, the Logion, which comes, that word oracles is Logion, which is comes from the Greek word Logos, which is the word of God. And it becomes such as that need of milk and not of strong meat. And that right there <clears throat> reminds me of the scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. It says, 1 Corinthians 3, 1, and I, brethren, Paul, talking here, could not speak unto you as unto pneumaticals. I couldn't speak unto you as spiritual. Same thing in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. Before when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have neither one teacher again. I can't bring you into spirituals. I can't speak spirituals unto you because you're carnal, you're sarkikos, even as unto nepios in Christ. You're infants again. You're going to need the milk of the word, the first foundation of principles, the sincere milk of the word. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. For whereas, for, for ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envy and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? You're still functioning just like the world. You know, you're involved in passions and things that you shouldn't be involved in. You're giving your heart to so many other facets and areas. And the fact of the matter is, is a divided heart. That's the problem. See, you, you, you're not united in your heart. And, 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 and I, we understand that every kingdom divided against itself will not stand. You see, if, if, you're, if you're divided against yourself, you're dips of coast, you're twice soulless, you can't even make up your mind about the ways of God, the will of God, the work of God, the way of God. You don't search and you don't seek after the Father. Well, what do you think the outcome is going to be? You're involved in your carnality. You're involved in... All these things that you say are the preeminence and the priority when the scripture teaches us, seek ye first the kingdom of God, amen. And his righteousness, his right ways, his right way, his right path to life. And all these things that the Gentiles, the world, and everybody else is seeking for will be added unto you. It won't be a struggle, amen. <clears throat> So back to Hebrews chapter 5. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a napios. He's a babe. Amen. There's five Greek words that speak of the spiritual maturity of the Christian. A babe is napios, which means no speech. Padion, P A I D I O N, means um, <clears throat> it's like the potty stage, it's a baby. That's, that's grown up a little, you starting to walk around, looks like a little woman, a little man, a little girl, a little, a little woman, but you're still making a lot of messes. Then you've got technology, John 1, 12, to as many as received him, to then give he power, authority to become the sons of God, the technons of God. We have authority to become. We're not 
fully matured, but we have we're we're in that place where we can become. <clears throat> and so therefore, excuse me. So therefore, the tech nuns, these are the teenagers. These are the ones that are out there and they're ready. They think they're ready, excuse me. They have the keys to the car and they're involved in the work of God, but they're making a mess everywhere. Their, 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 their message and their delivery is involved with mixtures and overtones from the world. They have opinions and views that are not, not even reflected from the Word of God. You know, the, they're confused. The Word of God is clear on one matter. They can't understand, for example, how, how the Word of God teaches us about hell and about if, you're, if you don't want God, then that's where you're going to be at. And, and the Scripture is clear that, you know, say ye to the righteous, it shall be well with him, but woe unto the wicked, for they shall eat the fruit of their doing. The, the righteous will eat the good of the land, but the, the wicked, they're going to perish. That's just that's, that's the bottom line. There's no, there's no need to milk it. <clears throat> it's not that God doesn't love us and humanity. It says he's giving you ways, he's giving you the provision on how, and therefore the sons of God, they need to grow up into maturity, which is the next Greek word, we also God, the fully matured son. Jesus was the we us of God, the we us of man. Amen. He was a fully matured son. He was ready for the work of God. Amen. And he was one that was given the work of God. He knew the will of God. He knew the way of God. He knew the word of God, and he knew the will of God. He was the will of God. He was the word. He was the way. He was the work. He was the representation of what God was trying to do in the earth of bringing many sons unto glory. He knew all of these things. Amen. And uh, man, it's it's, it's uh, oh God, have mercy. So then you've got the pater, which is the father. Now you're ready to bring up sons and daughters. Amen. Now you've come to the place where you're mature. It's not about you. It's not about your vision. It's about the impartation to the next generation. It's about raising up sons and daughters and bringing them to maturity. And that means that if you've got to correct, you've got to correct. Amen. You've got to instruct. You've got to teach. Just like we teach our sons and daughters in our homes. Same thing. You know, I spend time with my son when we're going to bed. We talk about the Word of God, the Word of God, the principles. Uh, you know, I share with them experiences that I've gone through. And things where God is correcting me and what He's teaching me and showing me. And, and always, always, always talking about that Word of God, amen. And, and, and knowing, you know, knowing these, these principles and these ways and bringing them and imparting them to our sons and daughters. Because <clears throat> let me tell you something this world and its, and its quickness, this cosmos, this situation, it will impart, you know, corruptible seeds into their hearts. And, and the more you work with your sons and daughters, the more you're able to weed out and pull out all this perversion into, from their hearts and, and replace it with the Word of God, the Kingdom of God, etc. So everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the Word of Righteousness, for he is a napiance. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You come to the place, and, and it, you know, it's... It, it's everywhere it seems that I walk <clears throat> and I go, when I go out there into the world, when I drive to the store, when I go put gas or whatever, you know, there's an awareness in spirit that I, that I meditate on and, 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 and I'm always looking for, for Father, you know, Lord Jesus, you have anything here that, that, that you want to handle, that you want to deal with? And, um, you know, the carnality's out there, the loud music, you see people arguing, you know, you see people involved with the cares of this world. And it's always that situation where, you know, I'm looking for, you know, where does the Lord, you know, is there something that the Lord wants me to do? And the point I'm making is, is that you can't do that if you're not sensitive to your spirit, man. If you're involved and you're about your own cares and your own life and you're not seeking first, then you're not going to see first what He wants you to see. You're not going to be involved with what He wants you to be involved in. And I just encourage all of us to grow up and mature in the things of God. We want to go to heaven, praise God, but we don't want to grow up. We don't want to come to maturity. We're sluggish. We're, we're dull. We're lazy. We don't want to get involved in the Word of God. We think we already have it. It's not about what we're doing as far as these works. And the thing about it is, the works that are not of God, that are not born out of your spirit, 
These are dead works. And there, God is not getting any glory from that. You are. You see? <clears throat> you know, the first of the Ten Commandments, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Before me is the Hebrew word panim, which is my face. I can't even look at your perversion. You're involved in your carnal man. You're coming forth out of your own soul. You're involved in these Ishmaels, the product of the flesh. And I can't even look at it because it's unclean, it's unholy, it's impure. It needs to come forth out of your spirit, man. Amen. Chapter 6, verse 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, number one, and faith toward God, which is what we're discussing right now, we're going to get into, of the doctrine of baptisms, or seven baptisms, of the laying on of hands, of the resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. The resurrection of the dead is, you know, we, we need to understand what, 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 that is, what that is and what God is saying to us, etc. In all these, obviously. And this is what we do, God permit. <clears throat> you know, oh man. Thank you, Father. All right. Thank you, Lord, for your word right now. Let's start with the word here. This is called the circle of experience. This is the process of what happens when the word comes into our hearts and our lives and what is going on with what is the enemy working on? What is he trying to accomplish? What is he getting us to? So in Romans chapter 10, verse 14, all these outlines all these videos, all these audios, they're all being published online. They're free. I'm not charging anybody anything. And I'm not interested in charging anyone anything. And I'm saying that because, you know, you can take these words, you can take these outlines, you can study these on your own. You know, in my phone, I use an app called MySword. And what's nice about it is, is oh, that's probably going to flip back. <laughs> What's nice about it is, is that the, the, the Greek words are there, the Hebrew words are there, the, the where all those scripture words are used, and those, those, those words, those Greek words, and what verses they're used in, and how they're translated. And why is that important, right? Well, for example, there's nine different Greek words for the word gift. It doesn't just mean I'm going to give you a present the way we think. You know, and if we didn't know that, nine different Greek words in the New Testament. If we didn't know that, we would think every time we're reading that word gift, it just means a present. Well, it doesn't. And why am I saying that? I'm saying that because, for example, there's three words for the word life. And the other word is another word that, that is behavioral life, which is anastrophe. There's zoe, God's life, suke, soul, your life, self. Uh, bios, which is livelihood. Okay. Your, your, your work and what you do, your business. And then there's the word anastrophe. It's not actually translated, translated life, but it means behavioral life, the way you behave and conduct yourself in the New Testament. So <clears throat> these are, the, the, you know, that's, that's part of the, one of the reasons you need to get involved in the Word of God, because when you might see a word, repentance, two words for repentance, faith, two words for faith. Oh, man. Oh, and then there's many other scriptures. I mean, Greek words. Is, you know, we think it's one thing. It's actually, it's it's two other, three other words. You know, power. There's four words for power. <clears throat> All right. So, Romans chapter ten, verse fourteen. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? You're going to have to hear the Word of God. You're going to have to get taught the Word of God. You've got to get involved in the Word of God. You're going to have to spend time with the Lord. Let the Holy Ghost, let the work of God work. Amen. Let the Word of God work in your heart. Spend time with your Father alone. Don't be distracted. This is why early in the morning is the best time, one of the good, the perfect times, to get involved with the Father because there's no distractions. Nobody's walking around. No sounds are coming out from anywhere. And, um, uh, Speaking of sounds, 
me. There's no sounds coming from anywhere. You know, there's no distractions to, to keep you from the presence of God. You're able to pray in the Spirit and the Holy Ghost. You're building up your most holy faith. Amen. The Lord is quickening you. You're being encouraged by the Lord. Amen. Amen. So, you're going to have to get involved and you're going to have to hear the Word of God. You've got to go hear the Word of God. Somewhere, somebody's teaching the Word of God. Right now, I'm teaching the Word of God. I'm, I'm revealing to you the things of God, the ways of God, etc. And in verse 17, it reads that, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. So, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God, okay? So, when we hear the Word, if you're going to go get taught the Word of God, you're going to learn the Word of God, well then, somebody, it's going gonna, it's gonna to bring faith to your heart. You know, the places where Jesus' the Word declares that, that Jesus... <coughs> um, was able to do no mighty works there because of their unbelief and pistia, which is the lack of faith. And uh, and it says in the scriptures that he, he stayed with them and he taught them. Well, why did he teach them? Because he knew the ways of God, obviously. You have to get the word in your heart and somebody's got to teach it to you. That is the way of God. He sent, he gave some, First, first Corinthians 12, 28, <clears throat> and he gave some to be apostles, some, to, no, excuse me, and, he, and God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers. These, this is the way of God. This is order, amen. And, and somebody's got to preach and teach you that word of God. So you have to get involved with the word of God. Well, let's go take a look at uh, Mark chapter 4, verse 15. And these are they by the wayside, where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. So they heard the word, but Satan came immediately to take that seed of the word out of their hearts. And and that's that's what he does. He's he's going to come from the word for the word's sake, and he brings all these distractions and all these situations that pull us away from God. Not realizing that the that the the work of the enemy is being accomplished and keeping you away from the word of God, and you know, I appreciate the word of the Lord that went forth last was it last Sunday two Sundays ago, and that you know the the, the grounds that Jesus is talking about here are all right here inside of us. You know, I don't want to be stony ground. I don't want to be shallow ground. I don't want to be ground that's 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 that, that was full of weeds and you know all these distractions and all these things in our lives that keep us keep that seed from getting into your heart and and and, and, and the engrafted word etc from getting in our hearts and blowing up inside our hearts that is the seed in other words just like it does in the ground I don't want that word to come forth I want the kingdom of God to come forth I want the ways of God the will of God the work of God etc the word of God. And, and so we have to understand that Satan comes for the word. He's coming the, for the word. He's, he's coming to see, do you believe that word? And, and why? Because he doesn't want you to get involved in the word of God. See, he, uh, as the scripture says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and uh, thy, she, thy seed shall bruise your head. You see, we have authority over the devil. We have authority over his acts and over his works. And we don't need to be in fear about it, amen. But you need to understand that God, that the enemy is trying to keep you away from the word of God. If you look at Luke chapter 8 verse 12, same thing. These by the wayside are they that hear, and then cometh the devil, and taketh away the word, the Logos, out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. See, if you believe, you believe, you believe the word, the word, the word, you will be saved. That is the principle, amen. In Romans chapter 10. And if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, homologia, speak the same as the word, you will be saved. That is the principle of the way of God. And so, again, he, he's coming to take away that word. We need to understand how the, the enemy operates. And the reason this is relevant <clears throat> to faith towards God is that this is the process that go, we go through when the word comes. When God begins to bring the word to our lives, you see, 
And, and whatever, you know, wherever you're at with God and whatever He's dealing with you on, and whatever He's revealing to you, see, the, the, that word, He's coming to take that word and steal that word because He doesn't want that word to come into maturity, 30, 60, 100. He doesn't want it to be a full corn. Amen. Where you're walking in that principle and that truth without any distractions, without any hesitation, that word flows. Amen. Praise God. Same thing, Matthew 13, 19, when anyone <clears throat> heareth the word of word, I like how he says here, and when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, amen. And what is the kingdom of God, amen? It's your heart. He's got to rule you by your spirit. He's got to rule over your soul, in your spirit. And, and therefore, this is the base, this is the, the place of God, where God is able to direct us through his word. So the word... So one heareth the word of God, when any one heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, and understandeth not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. You see? So, again, he's, testing, he's coming to test our faith in the word. Not to test the word. He knows the word is true. The scripture says in James 2.19, the devils believe and they tremble. They know the word of God. They don't have any problem. We know who you are, they told Jesus, thou son of man. And, and so, anyway, they know the word of God. Satan was there in, in, in the presence of God. He, uh, he saw the operation of God. He saw the order of God. He saw how everything operated and functioned. Except that when iniquity was found in his heart, he quickly understood that when he was cast down, oh my gosh, you know, I've been cast down from the presence of God. All right, so if you if you notice in, in Luke chapter four, where Jesus experienced Luke chapter four, starting with verse one. <clears throat> And Jesus, being full, praise God, of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the wills of God, into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. One of the things about operating in the, in, in, in the ministry of Jesus Christ and, and Operating in, in, in pouring forth the Word of God, the Kingdom of God, the manifestation of the Spirit, you know, the, the, the epicoriego, moving in the Spirit, amen. He therefore that ministered to you, the Spirit doeth you by the works of the Lord, by the hearing of faith. One of the things about this is that you have to, when you start to understand the ways of God, is that you're pouring forth, well, you've got to go back and get restored. But before Jesus came into what he was going to step into, he spent some time with God, 40 days praying, seeking God's will. And who came? The enemy came. And, and if you notice too, every, there's many instances when Jesus, after he was sharing and pouring out the Spirit of God and the Word of God, the ministry, the healing, the deliverance and so on, he would go and hide himself and, and pray. It says some, in some references it says, all night. And glory to God when he came and he was ready. Whew. Power, amen. And in those days he did eat nothing when they were ended. After he afterward hungered, verse 3. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the we house of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Every time Jesus came to the enemy after a confrontation that the enemy would bring to him, Jesus answered him, saying, It is written. That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. In verse 8, it talks about, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And in verse 12, it says, And Jesus answered and said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Amen. Don't tempt me, hallelujah. I'm your master, amen. I'm the one that dominates you, glory to God. Mm. You see, Jesus went through 
things that, that you're, me and you as brothers and sisters are, are, are encountering at this time, are going to encounter, it is the way of God to be tested. In Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15, It says that, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was on all points tempted or tested, is the word, like as we are yet without sin. You see, Jesus went through testing. It's the way of God. Well, why does anybody get tested? You know, why do we take tests, right? Why? Why do we go through in our classes, in our school rooms, etc., colleges, whatever? Why are we being tested? Obviously, to see if we know the material, right? Well, in the kingdom of God, the trials are coming to bring forth purity, to bring forth the preciousness of God. You see, God can't trust you if He doesn't know you. And so, therefore, tests come to prove what's in the heart. Are you gonna are you gonna whine? Are you gonna complain? Are you gonna murmur? Are you gonna check out? In other words, are you gonna let your soul, you know, have, allow you to have a fit? I mean, move you into having a fit like a baby? Oh man. We get, we need to understand that our, there's a reason why we're being uh, allowed to be tested because we have to be proven. God cannot trust us. If God cannot trust you, you're not going to come into the work of God. You're not going to be able to bring forth the will of God, the way of God, etc., the word of God. Colossians 2, 14 and 15. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a sh show of them openly, triumphing, triumphing over them in it. Hallelujah. He came forth, amen. He triumphed, amen. He triumphed over the test. He triumphed over all that he came into. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, and through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. See, when you come to that place in the Lord, you've been proven, you've been tried, and you move and, and you, you operate in the things of God without any problem, you're sensitive to the Lord, you're the one that has the dominion, amen, in Christ. The dominion over Satan, the dominion over all the demonic realm. And see, this is part of the acknowledgement of coming into that place with the Lord Jesus, is that you're, you have that power, you have authority, you know how to minister and move in the Spirit. You're sensitive to the things of God. You can bring forth the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith. You bring forth faith, you preach the word. You know, one of the things I know is that when I'm sharing the Word and teaching the Word, boy, faith just, boom, rises up. And many times there's a manifestation of faith in the body of Christ in my brothers and sisters' hearts. And at that moment, you know, there's that's the moment to strike Him and that's to petition God and seek God in His Word and ask Him for the things that we need. Amen. And um, in verse, Acts chapter 19, verse 15, And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you see this guy was trying to operate and 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 i adjure you it says i was in the in the priest uh you know this guy tried to move in the authority of jesus christ and he wasn't even the son of god he wasn't born again and uh he quickly found out you know what's what what the results are if you're not moving with god He comes for the word's sake to try your faith and to get you out of the word. But the trying of your faith, as it says in James 1, chapter 1, I mean verse 1, verse 3, chapter 1, verse 3. Actually, let's go to verse 2. My brethren, count all joy when you fall into divers trials, temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. 
It's not the trial that you need to, to count on joy, it's knowing this. And I've heard that said many, many times, you know, is that uh, God did this so that he could, so he could, uh, so he could uh, test you, you know. That's not the way it works, is that he's not the one coming to test, it's the enemy coming to test. So, we need to understand that. Knowing this is trying to be faith worketh patience. That word patience is a word of hominy. We're talking about the circle of experience. The word comes, faith comes, faith comes, Satan comes, patience comes. Experience comes. And, and, and experience comes and therefore, you know, we come out in a place where we experience and we're experiencing the things of God. We understand the, the works of the enemy. We don't have any problem. Our soul man is not rising up when it gets confronted and challenged. See, you're walking around as a dead man, glory to God. You're walking around, and, and as, as, as Jesus says, you know, if you seek to save your life, you're going to lose it. That word life is suke okay, soul. If you seek to save your life, you're going to lose it. But if you seek to lose it for my sake, you'll be in it. In other words, you'll be at that place where you can operate and move in the spirit without any conflicts or problem. Because your, your, your soul, man, your carnal man is, 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 is crucified with Christ. You don't have any conflicts there. A soul man is not rising up at any given time and, and, and bringing forth and spewing trash, you know, coming forth out, out of the soul man and, and everything dead that's coming out. And you're not being tried to see what the word will do, but to see what you are going to do with the word. What are you going to do with the word? It's going to come. The trials and the pressure, you know, the winds, the rains, the floods. The question is, are you going to stand on that rock? Are you going to maintain your confession, your homologia? Are you going to get off of the Word in whatever matter you're trusting God in, in the Word? And um, again, patience comes, you know. But let patience, let who in verse 4, James 1, 4, have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire one to nothing. You see, you constantly, your constant who again means constant in the word you don't vacillate you're not all wishy-washy well you know you're very constant you're you're faithful you're reliable you're trustworthy you see you, you every time you come to a situation you handle it with the word of god you're not in, you're not bothered you know i got fired or lost my job i'm not working or whatever the situation is you know <clears throat> you come forth in, in consistency constant 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 with the word and, uh, and that's where we want to be at. We want that, that word of life flowing out of our hearts and lives um, with accuracy and with consistency. Romans chapter um, 5, 1 through 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father. But whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations, and also knowing that the tribulation, okay, here it goes, the test and the trials worketh hupomene, and hupomene, patience, experience, and experience bringeth us to a place of hope. And verse 5 says, And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts, by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Praise God. And that's the thing, man, is that we get to that place where our heart is full of hope. You, 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 just like a, a woman is pregnant with a child, man, that, that child is growing inside her womb, and there's so much fullness of hope that, that when that baby comes forth, and all the love and attention and care you're going to give it. You see, that, that thing that's produced, that comes forth out of your spirit, you, you, you're you able to glory and you're so full of the hope and trust of God in the matter. And you, and you know that without any shadow of doubt that you've got something from God. And, and you're able to, to move it with, with a lot of joy and, 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 and peace. Because, oh, excuse me. And peace because it came forth out of your spirit, praise God. Just like a baby, you know, that, that gets brought forth. Ooh, man. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. 
Praise God. Oh, God. Excuse me. Hallelujah, Father. Cast not away, therefore, thy confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. In other words, don't move in your position in the Word of God. Stay after it, amen, like a bird dog trying to go get that duck. He stays with it till he gets it, amen. Stay with it, amen. Stay after it. For we have need of hupomene, patience is the word there, hupomene, that after that you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. See, when you stay constant, 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 constant in the word of God, trusting and believing in your heart, professing, confessing, homologia, speaking the same as the word, constant, 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 you will come to that place as the word says, that you might receive the promise. You will, by faith toward God, amen. Without any questions, without any problems. Hmm. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with upamane, patience, the race that is set before us. Amen. Looking unto Jesus, glory to God. Don't focus on yourself. Don't focus on all the cares and what's going on around you. That doesn't mean being irresponsible. I'm saying put Jesus first. Amen. As Martha, you know, she was busy, 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 busy. And Martha said, care's not that. And I'm over here working all this and doing all this. Can you get Mary to help me out? And Jesus told her, Mary has chosen that good thing. The precious. Amen. Me. She's chosen me. She's at my feet. She's receiving me. Leave her alone. Hmm. And why do we need patience? Why do we need Hupamane? Luke 21, 19. Man, precious, precious. In your patience possess ye your suke, your soul. Patience, Hupamane. You maintain constancy. You keep that soul man in check, Lord of God. He doesn't get all out of sorts. He doesn't start whining, complaining. And he start, doesn't allow his heart to be full of doubt and unbelief and speaking Contrary to the word of God, you stay constant, believing and trusting in your faith towards God without any conflicts. Mm. Man. Bless in your name, Father. I thank you, Lord, for your word right now. Your word is lying unto those who find them and help all their flesh. And that your people might find your word, amen. Hallelujah, Father. Psalms chapter 27. Thirteen and fourteen, I had fainted. You see, the soul will faint. He'll give up. He'll lose it if you don't stay constant in the Word of God. Unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. He shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say in the Lord. You must wait and you must be constant and trust in God without any fear or doubt. Hmm. Mm. Hallelujah, Father. Can't believe we're almost at the end here. Mm. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. We can't give this up, man. We can't let go of our trust towards God and our faith towards God. If we do, we're gonna we're gonna be at that place where again the enemy has us where he wants us and we've given up on the word and the victory is accomplished in his eyes. His victory, what he wants. So Hebrews chapter twelve, verse three, it says, For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds, your soul. The, mind, the word minds there is the Greek word suitcase soul. This is where we faint. We give up. We lose. Oh, who can do this? And we start getting exasperated. And we, and we let out these sighs of, 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 of distrust and unbelief. And before you know it, we're out of the will of God. We're out of the word of God. And we're like, well, I don't know what happened. 
And the thing about it is, is that you must watch and pray. You know, Jesus said in Luke 26, 41, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. This is how you keep your soul man back. This is how you gain the victory. In your patience, possess your soul. Watch and pray. Constant, constant, constant in the presence of God. In the presence of God. Constantly involved in the Word of God. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. There's two ways you enter into temptations. You enter because you knowingly are walking into it with knowledge. Or you fall, as it says in James, count on joy when you fall. When you fall, there's grace, Lord of God, to move you quickly out of that situation. Amen. But when you enter in, you knowingly enter in. And therefore, the recovery time for that issue is, is much tougher. But thank God that He will restore us. Amen. <clears throat> and uh, Luke chapter 18, verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not faint. We can't give up. We've got to maintain. We've got to pray. Amen. We don't understand that when we give it up, we're allowing the enemy in. He's coming in. He'll rob, steal, kill, and destroy everything and, and take from us what is ours by inheritance of Jesus Christ. And we don't want to be at that place where, where all this confusion is going on. We don't going on around our lives. You know, our situations are happening. Things are going wrong. And we don't know what's going on. We feel like we've lost control. Well, let me just tell you, there's demonic activity there. And, and the enemy is winning the battle in that situation. So when you experience, when you're involved in experiencing the Word of God, James says that if we let her have her perfect word, work, we would be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Romans 5, Paul says that who plummeted brings experience and experience brings hope, and hope making not ashamed. That same hope that comes will anchor your soul, according to Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19, and make the next test easier, amen, because you're aware and you understand the ways of God. And 1 Peter 1, 7 says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold that perish, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. You know, what is the purpose of the trial? Why do we need to go through this? Why do we need to be tested? Well, at some point, we're, we're going to come into a situation where now God can bring you into His work. And the scripture says in Hebrews chapter 10, 2 10, For it became for Him, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many we us unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Jesus had to go through this, and so do we. So let's not be confused about the way of God here. And I'm not going to cover these, um, this next section here, where which talks about who is he bringing into the work of God. You know, he was our brother. He called us brothers. Jesus Christ is our brother, but he's also our Lord. And, uh, you know, I don't need any other tag on my life except to know that I'm a brother in Christ to my brothers and sisters. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, a lot of us are still confused about that in the body of Christ. And uh, it says in Job chapter 32, I'm going to read this one. I mean, this is the word. I don't know, how can it not be any clearer than this? We're going to cover, we'll get into this a little more next time we're together. For let me not, verse chapter 32, Job 32, 21 and 22. Let me not, I pray you, accept any man's person, neither let me give flattering titles unto man. For I know not to give flattering titles, and so doing, my Maker would soon take me away. I don't want to be, you know, taken away from God because I'm, I'm so involved with, with the world and the spirit of this world, how it operates, and how it's crept into the, the body of Christ. I want to be pure, I want to be sanctified and holy unto the Lord, meet for the Master's use, you know, ready. Amen. Being in season, in season, out of season, ready to bring forth the, the hope of what, what we have in Jesus Christ. And, and this world is dying. This world needs the sons of God to wake up and get involved in their work and what, and what God has called them into. But you've got to go through the way of God, the process of God, etc., etc. And He's not going to entrust these works to the carnal man. 
Although the carnal men are doing these works, this is why there's conflicts and problems still. This is why the gates are still, the gates of hell are still winning the battle. When Jesus said that I will build my church, my ecclesia, and the gates of hell will not prevail. So I want to thank you for this time. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for this opportunity to teach your word and come before your people, Lord God. I bless you, Lord, for your goodness and mercy, Father. I thank you, Lord God, for your great grace in our lives. We bless you, Father. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.